Hi, I'm Paul from Test Data Services, and this is a quick video walkthrough of a test plan for a load test. This is how I normally deliver my load test plans now and the results as well. Uh, so I give a document and I give a link to a video summary of that document. So we'll go right to it. This is the executive summary. Now this test is actually a real test, but it's of test data services. So what I'm explaining in here is that we're going to focus on the OpenID Connect um, endpoints and the associated supporting endpoints that are to do with fetching identities, unique identities, and storing them and retrieving them for later use. The test is split into three main levels of workload, uh, 10 concurrent users, which is really for performance. So we run a 20 minute test uh, with 10 users just to see how consistent the performance is and what the optimal performance is with low uh, concurrency usage. 100 concurrent uh, sessions or requests, which is with 100 users, and that's running significant workload. Uh, it's really simulating multiple concurrent load tests. Test data services can support lots of concurrent load tests, but this is just showing that 100 concurrent requests is fine. And then the final test is 1,000. The reason for this is that the default Lambda concurrency in an AWS account is 1,000. So if you try and run more than 1,000 Lambdas at the same time, you'll start to get throttled. Uh, so if I have 1,000 users, and each of the users are issuing sequential requests, and I don't have any Lambdas that call more Lambdas, then I can't exceed that, uh, that base um, level of concurrency with 1,000 users. And I don't want to hit that. I want to find other problems rather than uh, that problem. So based on uh, some quick scripting that I did, it looks like if I have 10 users running, they can do about 25 OpenID Connect uh, calls per second uh, sustained, which means that with 1,000 users, I should be able to do uh, much more than 1,000, uh, heading toward 2,000. So the purpose of this test is to demonstrate the amazing scale of AWS for serverless and the way that Test Data Services has leveraged it. But it's also a way of showing you how I do uh, documents, how I do scripts, and how I do uh, uh, results and analysis and how I communicate with video summaries. So the scope of testing is really to cover two business processes, a sign up and an authorize. So when you sign up with OpenID Connect to a system like sign in with Google, for example, you um, have one OpenID Connect interaction. And to support that, we need to grab a unique identifier or unique person from two and a half million. We don't want to grab that, grab that person a second time. And we want to do an authorization code flow um, uh, to set that up. And then later on, we want to do an authorize with any of those that have been signed up. Uh, but we don't want to just do the authorize. We want to also do up to five, sorry, an average of five refresh tokens. So between one and nine refresh tokens. And that's because in most OpenID Connect systems, the token will not last very long, but the authorization will last a long time and we would expect multiple refreshes. So we're going to measure performance of each API call and we're going to report on that along with the 90th percentile. Uh, all of the back-end services are powered by AWS Serverless Platform, so we're going to do monitoring of the back-end just using simple CloudWatch consoles and dashboards. I'll put those in the report and I'll show them to you in the, the next, uh, one of the subsequent videos. In the event of very poor performance, I dig in and actually work out what additional CloudWatch monitoring needs to be activated. Maybe there's a DynamoDB table or an index that's causing a problem, and I would do that. But the default approach is to just look at the Lambda calls. If the Lambda calls are coming back fast, I don't really need to dig in any further. Uh, testing assumptions and risks. Normally this is real. For this um, example here, my assumption is that, um, that there are viewers that will find this interesting <laughs> and educational. Uh, the main risk is that they don't find it interesting or they don't even read or watch it. And that's totally fine. Uh, the tests to be in, uh, executed, there's three tests, a performance tests, a uh, performance test rather, a load test and a capacity test. Each will be 20 minutes long, including up to a few minutes for ramp up. I do articulate in here that the statistics for analyzing will be for 15 minutes from the beginning of the fifth minute. 
and all of these tests will be running at a, a uh, stabilized level of workload by then. The setup for the test, I'm using LoadRunner 12.63 to drive the test. 10 load generators, they're all AWS EC2 instances. They happen to be C5X large, which to me is a pretty good one um, to use. No load will be generated for the controller. The protocol I'm using is DevWeb. Now in 12.63, it was called TrueWeb. And the reason I'm using this is I wanted to get some practice with it. I haven't needed to use it for uh, a real engagement. But the other nice thing is in 12.63 of LoadRunner, it's free. So I could run a 1000 user test now and demonstrate that to you. And that's a lot better than running a 50 user community edition test. Um, I've also said in here that before running the test, we really ought to do a dry run. And the reason we want to do a dry run of the full load is that there's quite a lot of components in AWS that need to be warmed up, if you like. They need to be sized. And that's everything from DynamoDB, write limits, to um, um, uh, what have I written here? I should read what I've written. Um, load balances, uh, on-demand sizing for indexes as well as tables, and various other components. If you, for the first time, subject the system to unprecedented load, you might run into issues that aren't really issues. And a little while after that unprecedented load, it will handle that load. So I think it's fair to just hit it first. Uh, data management, um, prior to starting a test, I create a new subscription key and I use that for the test. And uh, I create a new open ID connect client ID with the appropriate secret. And f the identities used in this are the free set of identities. That's two and a half million of them. Uh, so that's the test plan. Uh, the next uh, document, uh, sorry, the next video is a walkthrough of the test artifacts. And then there'll be a video on the test report. And I might do an extra one after that as well. Thanks. Have a good day.